All right, let's roll on to college basketball with CMAC. Fresh off a 3-0 and performance last week. Not only that, but it really was a 4-0 and performance. There was one spot, I believe, was it the Virginia spot? I think that it, it he got yeah. a two and a half. It was available at four. He didn't move on it, but a lot of us still did and cashed comfortably. So it really was a sort of a four and zero day, but three and zero performance from CMAC. Let's get right to work. CMAC. We start at seven thirty p.m. Eastern. The number eight ranked Auburn Tigers, sixteen and two, five and zero in the SEC at the Alabama Crimson Tide, twelve and six, four and one in the SEC. Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa. Alabama and I have not bet since Friday. I was a half point away from six and one. Uh, we've got mm-hmm. five and five and two. So I've not, I'm sticking to the plan to only bet college basketball when I cap it with everybody and it's been working. So stick with it. Don't mess with it. That's what I've done. Auburn in uh, a winning streak. And Alabama had a winning streak, but all of uh, Auburn in the throes of a very, very legit 11 game winning streak. They come off. A uh, home performance versus Ole Miss that was dominant, 82-59. Uh, Their last road games, they beat Vanderbilt by 15. They beat Texas A&M. Oh, excuse me. They beat Arkansas by by 32. Uh, then, now that's the it. That's it, though. There's just two road games here in this winning streak. Uh, their actual last loss was on the road. It was at App State. So, but... Impressive wins over Arkansas in Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Alabama had their winning streak snapped on Saturday. Both teams played on Saturday. They lost badly at Tennessee, 91-71, and are probably an angry group. They shot 19% from three. They were five-and-a-half-point dogs, and they got dominated throughout. I mean, it was just a no-show. They were down 13 at the break. That is the situation. Let's get into the line history here for this one and the cash flow and then hand it over to CMAC for best bet number one. We have from a – oh, God, sorry. Too many games is going to be a problem. I got to get faster this. Uh, so from a point spread situation, where's the eight on Auburn? Fuck. Uh, there we go. Uh, we have Auburn sitting right now as three and a half point dogs. We're going to use Bet Online for our market moves. Don't forget, if you're opening up a new account, do it at Bet Online through our link on our website. They will give you a 100% match up to $1,000. And our next poker game is Friday, February 2nd. Friday night, February 2nd at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, this opened up at Bet Online with Auburn at plus two. Uh, within 10 minutes, they were two and a half. Uh, An hour and a half after that, they were three. Then they dropped down to two and a half again. But they're sitting right now at three and a half, and it is juiced Auburn. So we have, excuse me, it's juiced Auburn. But we had a point and a half move uh, towards Alabama at home after that ugly performance against Tennessee. From a total standpoint here, we are dealing with a 162, a very high total. But it opened higher. It opened up at 164 and a half. So we have a – and it got down to 161 and a half before there was a bit of buyback. So we have a, a move to the under as well as a move uh, towards uh, Alabama at home. So let's take a look at the cash flow then for this spot here. Come on, please, for the love of – okay, sorry. It's just so many games here. I, I'll have this better set up for these future games that we have. Here, come on, Jesus. Uh, I'm going to find it. It will take me a uh, second, but let's get right to uh, – oh, it's because it was 7.30 yeah. start. Sorry. Uh, um, oh, Sky Dragon, you just have to click on what happened uh, last week. So on the site, you just click over to uh, divisional round. Oh, sorry, click over to wild card round, and then you see. Click over wild card or divisional. It's set up pretty good. 83% and 93% of the cash. Wow, damn. I was hoping that was less. of the tickets and 93% of the cash is on Alabama. Lines moving towards them. Then 38% of tickets and 77% of cash is on the under. Take it away for us, C-Mac, your first game on the board, Auburn, Alabama. Yeah, it's hit the total real quick. This is a high total. I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, Both these teams can score, uh, especially with Bama at home. Auburn's been very, very good. I think a lot of people, Jimmy, are going to see this team uh number eight in the country 16 and two uh kind of just rolling through but i think this is where they get stopped here Uh, they take an l in this one i've seen it time in time out 
Uh, they've had some good records before. And a lot of these games, true road game, they've had a few neutrals. They did lose at App State early 69-64. But these last couple, I think, are a little bit – these teams aren't bad, but Arkansas is not good. We've all figured that out. They're not very good. Even at home, they blew them out. At Vandy, Vandy's not very good. Uh, home wins versus LSU. Old Miss, I thought were excellent. They were great at home. But I want Bama in this spot, minus the three and a half. I love it off the loss. I faded them on Saturday. I had Tennessee. Tennessee with the easy 20-point victory. I think they bounce back here in a desperate win they need. At home, in conference play, give me the tie. Roll, tie. My bookie still hanging a three. What's the juice? That. Minus 110. Beautiful. Alabama minus three at minus 110. Let me just click on it just to ensure that it's not a uh, stale. Yeah, that's uh, it, it actually came back. It came back 11 minutes ago. This was a three and a half. It came back 11 minutes ago to a three i like it i like it you are locked in alabama minus three four c-mac jimmy real quick two which i always love short number laying at home bama not great defensively but they shoot the three well 39 percent, 60 in the country and one of my favorites laying points 78 percent from the free throw line ninth in the country that's why i'm on it too yeah it's um there's a lot to like. The only thing that, that – there's only one thing that I don't love for it all to correlate, and that's just how much action is on them. Yeah. But I other than it. that, you're right. It's absolutely perfect. Coming off the loss, angry group against a team that has a great record, but only two of those 11 wins that they're on the streak have come on the road. So uh, a, a lot of it correlates. Let's move on to the next spot on the board for CMAC Game 2. East Carolina Pirates, Wichita State Shockers. Nicholas Earls, East Carolina Pirates, losers of three straight basketball games. Uh, they played on Saturday. Wichita State played on Sunday. On Saturday, East Carolina lost at UAB 69-61. Four and a half point dogs. Didn't shoot the ball well, as being their issue this year. 36.7% from the field uh, in the loss, and they lose by eight. And they're still on the road here against the Wichita State team that's in the throes of an ugly losing streak. Wichita State has now lost seven straight games. And, man, uh, they, after South Florida looked so good against Memphis, uh, you know, which, Wichita State went into South Florida as four-and-a-half-point dogs and covered and almost won. And they shot 10.5% from three and almost won. They were covering the first half. It was, you know, that that famous spot of fading the team after a season-defining win, and you would have cashed had you have done that. So that's the situation here. Wichita State in the throes of a losing streak, seven straight, uh, with a one-day rest advantage for East Carolina. Let's get into the line history here for this one. We are sitting here with the same spread pretty much, just a half point different than our first game. We are sitting here with a three, Wichita State three-point favorites. They opened up as four-and-a-half-point favorites. We've had a point-and-a-half move towards East Carolina, point-and-a-half move towards East Carolina. From a total standpoint, we're sitting here with a 146 minus 115 of the over. It's opened up at 145. We have a one-point move uh, towards the over. And when we get into the cash flow for this spot, we have no information on the total. Not enough tickets in. <clears throat> and on the spread, 39% of the tickets and 91% of the cash on the East Carolina Pirates. Interesting. Take it away for a C-Mac Pirates. Shockers. I think East Carolina, let's talk about the side, can hang a little bit in this. It's short. You know, I wish I it, the game was, what, a point or two? And they were three-and-a-half-point dogs last week. They covered. Jimmy, uh, I thought it was just a little bit low. But, hey, uh, it got there. Now they're on the road. One thing I love with this East Carolina team, slow, 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 have trouble scoring. They're 11-7 and seven to the under this year. And their last 10 games, only one total has gone over this number here, Jimmy, at 146. They're going to drag this slow. Look at these numbers. They shoot 40%. Field goal percentage, 277. There's 31% from three. That's 300th in the country, 69 at the free throw line. Uh, on the flip side, Wichita State, I think this is a little skewed. They played a little bit more to the over 
to me. But there's really two games, Memphis and FAU, which we'll get to FAU coming up next, where these teams are just wildly over. But you look at a lot of their other games, they could play to the under and slow it down, whether it's K-State, uh, all these apes, Temple, North Texas even with standards number, 74-62. This was, this was three, four points too high. I got to be on the under here, 146. You got it under 146 at minus one. Real quick, oh, they shoot it just as bad, Jimmy Wichita. You know, <laughs> they're not very good. 31% from three, 67% for the free throw line. I guess this total's too high. This is under. You've got it uh, locked in. I, I know that we want to focus on college basketball, um, but uh, when Truth Teller says that every single point uh, is pointing towards the Ravens, you know, it's it's really astonishing. The Chiefs are, and Mahomes is 8-0-1 against the spread as a road dog. 8-0-1. Lamar Jackson's only won two of five playoff games. You have the best quarterback in the world who covers every game on the road going up against the quarterback who's never proved anything ever. There's so many... Uh, points for your Chiefs, Truth Teller. And it's it's fun that you're confident. You know, dragging Troy, who's been such a star uh, this year in his uh, NFL scorecasting, you know, calling him out and stuff like that, is, it's not – I don't like that part of it. But everything else, you being so bullish on the Chiefs is fun. It's great. And you can do that without dragging other people uh, down. You know, you could do that just talking about your angles and what you like about it, if, if you'd like. But you can do however uh, however you want to see it. But huge, huge angles supporting the Chiefs. Huge. Okay, uh, let's roll into our next spot here. In, you know, But I'm, I'm fading them. But, you know, it's going to be fun. And, and Truth Teller, we have the live stream too, so you can, you can tell us how right you are during the game. You can tell us what idiots we are during the game. Um, and that's part of the fun about our live stream. And we're not going against each other. So we don't need to hammer each other. You know, it's against the books. And if you think that Troy and I are falling into a trap with the Ravens, that's, you know, that's part of the fun of capping. Okay, uh, let's move on. 8 p.m. Eastern. We have the number 22 ranked Florida Atlantic Owls. We have the Battle of the Owls. 15 and 4, 5 and 1 in the American at the Rice Owls. 7 and 11, 1 and 4 in the American. We're in Houston, Texas for. This one. Let's get into the rest situation first and foremost. Uh, FAU played on Sunday. A uh, wild overtime game at UTSA. They won 112-103, their fourth straight victory. And Rice stopped the bleeding at Temple, 69-66 on Saturday. Uh, they were in the throes of a losing streak. Let's get into the line history here for this one and then see what CMAC's plan is. Florida Atlantic right now on the road, 12-point favorites. This opened up at minus 12 and a half, and it's moved a half point to 12. So very little movement from a total side of things here. We have a 152. Uh, this opened up at 152. It went up to 153 a couple different times, but it's right back from where it started. And then when we get into the cash flow for this one, we have 60% of the tickets on FAU, but just 20% of the cash. And then from a total side of things here, we have 60% of tickets and 79% of cash on the over. An over that's not moved. Take it away for us here, C-Mac, a battle of the owls at Tudor Fieldhouse in Houston, Texas. Battle of the owls. Yes, I like it. I was looking at this last night. FAU is just a team uh, that I haven't backed a ton, especially against the number. They kind of hit a flat spot here in the middle of the year. Now back to one thing that couldn't get over going through this game is – I know how bad Rice's defense is. They're not very good. Yes, they're at home here, and I think they could hang around scoring on FAU. But FAU's offense, they're just and their pace is just way too quick. You know, Jimmy, they're just going to be going up and down uh, through the roof. I loved it. what I'm going to here. Instead of laying the number, well, I think the full game could get over with Rice because I don't love FAU's defense. I saw their team total at 82 and a half. I got to be on this over. I know that last game, UTSA and Rice are so similar, even their record and all their numbers. That game went to OT, still would have flew over the 82. They had 86, which 86 UAB, 85, Tulane, 
as long as it didn't this didn't move up to 83 or anything at 82 and a half florida atlantic team total over i am interested in and it may be a mistake but things enough correlates here for me to look at rice as a double digit yeah i get it dog here um I, you know, I'm not going to lay the points with FAU. I just think they they get to 85 here with a C effort, I think. Wow, this plus 12, too, is minus 118 at Pinnacle. So it's it's not really even – I mean, this is going to be an 11 and a half any minute. The total uh, – I can get you an 82 and a half team total over uh, at even money. Beautiful. That's available at Pinnacle right now. So uh, CMAC is on FAU team total over 82 and a half at plus 100. And my first spot on the board here will be Rice. I'll be on the Rice Owls to cover. Let's move on. 11 p.m. Eastern, Colorado Buffaloes, 14 and 5, 5 and 3 in the Pac 12 at the Washington Huskies. 11 and 8, 3 and 5 in the Pac 12. Uh, Alaska Airlines Arena in Seattle, Washington for uh, this one. And we will check in on the horse race here uh, right after uh, in between guests. That's what we'll do is each time we are in between guests, we will take a look at uh, what is going on in the horse race. Let's talk about the final spot on the board for CMAC, fresh off uh, sweeping the board when he was with us last Wednesday in both college basketball and NHL. We have Colorado on the road at Washington. Uh, Colorado now winners of three straight, but they were all at home. We watched them struggle on the road. The, the losses just previous to the three-game winning streak over USC, Oregon, and Oregon State. Uh, they lose 82-78 at Cal. They lost 76-73 uh, at Arizona State. Going up against Washington, who's back at home, uh, where they've been good. They they. We're on the three-game road trip. Uh, they lost at UCLA by 12. It was ugly. Uh, they lost, or they beat Cal by two, and then they lost by 10 at Stanford on Saturday. So Colorado also coming off destroying Oregon State. I mean, we're talking annihilating them by 33 points here. Uh, so let's take a look at the line history here for this one. This is the final spot on the board for CMAC. We have, oh, shoot, here we go. Uh, we have right now a Washington plus two and a half and minus one Oh three. They opened up at plus one and a half. This got up to plus three and a half. So clear move uh, towards Colorado here uh, from, and it's come back a bit, but you know, pretty legit off the hop. And then from a total side of things, we're sitting at a one fifty six. This opened up at one fifty five and a half. got up to one fifty seven now, one fifty five and a half. And then when we get into the cash flow for the final spot on the board, this is our DGEN special at 11 p.m. Uh, there also is New Mexico San Jose State at this time. 90% of the tickets and 96% of the cash is on the over. And from a spread perspective, we have 29% of the tickets and 61% of the cash on Colorado. So big bets have come in on Colorado. Take it away for us here, C-Mac, your final spot on the board, Buffaloes, Huskies. Yeah, they seem to think Colorado's going to get a win here on the road. I don't buy it. I, I've seen this Colorado team do this <laughs> year in and year out. Uh, I know, la I believe last year they did beat Washington here by about five points. But now you're saying you got to go in there and win, but not just win, win by margin here by four or more. I just, uh, I can't do it. Everything that shows Colorado, once they leave Colorado, high altitude and go on the road, Jimmy, they've just not been the same team. Just their shooting, their defense. As you know, that that road trip that they just had, lost all three. Arizona got blown out by 37. They lost at Arizona State and Cal. Two all right teams at home, but not great. Uh, and everyone's loving it because Colorado, red hot, three straight wins at home, Jimmy. Wow, Colorado's back playing good basketball. And they see Washington with a couple losses. Even Washington on the road has been pretty good this year, Jimmy, and covered some numbers. You know, even on the Utah trip, they lost at by four to at Colorado, five at Utah. They are covered those numbers. Uh, they've been good enough at home, and they make enough shots here. So Washington Huskies plus three, late night special. They probably even went out right. You know, you did this so well with Southern Miss. Uh, Arizona State, this was last week. 
uh, Arizona State or Arkansas State, excuse me. Arkansas State became uh, went from dog to favorite, which obviously yeah. opens up all our eyes. And you moved on Southern Miss plus three. They won outright by three. And you're doing it again here. Uh, is there a three and a half available? Because from a situational spot, I agree with you completely. I'm just nervous and scared. The best I can find you is a three here, a plus three and minus 110. Can you find a three and a half? I can't uh, find a three and a half. So plus three for Washington. I got to keep an eye on these takes from you when you're going up against this perceived sharp action uh, because it worked in that Southern Miss. And that's when I messaged you about how good you were. It wasn't only that you went, you swept the board, but you got me on that Utah spot. You got me off of Arkansas State spot. It was just, it was this all encompassing, uh, excellent work. Uh, let's review C Max action here. Alabama minus three at minus 110. The under 46 at minus 105 in East Carolina, Wichita State. FAU team total over 82 and a half at plus 100. And Washington plus three at minus 110. 10. That is CMAX action. Uh, CMAX, excellent work. You can catch CMAX every Tuesday on the Peter Loshak show. That will continue when I return to the show. Uh, I am returning to Loshak and Bag, not next Tuesday, but the one after. CMAX will still do NBA and college basketball on Tuesdays with us, and he'll be doing college basketball with me on Wednesdays. And you can catch him every Saturday as well on our college basketball live stream c mac excellent work my friend please follow c mac on x at connor mac picks any last words for the capper supporting the show c mac oh thanks for having me i love uh these wednesdays i wish the little bit there the hockey games are a little bit uh better but i'm glad we had some games today so usually we only have a couple <laughs> on a wednesday but shout out to everyone in the chat truth teller nuke worker kelly troy keep killing it my man billy friedrich uh, talk sports with JT, Ian, Lucas, Kelly, everyone in here, Perky Bump Sanderson, Justin. Shout out to all you guys. Best chat out there, period. Hands down, Post Horse Radio. Become a gold member. Get in the race. Well, they'll be in the next race, right? They're yeah, out of this one. In the next race, yeah. Friday. Get in, get it. Thanks for having me. Peace. Respect. There he is, Connor Magpix. Let's take a look at the horse race right now. We have two hours and six minutes left. It is tight. A uh, Chris Boggan in that top group with Dutch Boy Fresh. There's Nut Flush Allen uh, as well. C Mac was up there while he was on camera, but falling back. And you know, you got two and two hours to sit back and relax. But Jeff Slaughter, Jeff Slaughter making an early move, an early move for Jeff Slaughter. That's where we stand. We'll check it again when we're past our next guest. Let's bring on our next guest. Uh, he has been very strong in college basketball on our show, and that includes uh, leaving money on the table. Billy Friedrich upsets us. Where the fuck is my horse? Let's pull that up once more. Uh, Jose, where the fuck is... Billy! Billy, you're right there! You're right there in the lead, man. Stay calm, pal. Stay calm. You have two hours and five minutes left. Stay calm. All right. We have our next guest, 25 and 19. And that's with him, you know, kind of holding back on some double up spots that would have cashed. He's hitting at 56.8% plus 4.12 units, ROI plus 9.36%, average line minus 110. Please welcome from Dallas, Texas, the star of Medicaid Mondays and our big Wednesday night live basketball betting show all about the hoops that pops off right here at 7 15 p.m eastern please welcome our friend dabby cab to the show dabby how are you jimmy i'm good man i see we got all the homies in the chat justin kelly billy everybody rolling in man you know how it is i'm ready to make some monday money 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 <laughs> Yeah, I'm ready to make some fucking money today, Jimmy. That's what we're here to do, man. That's exactly what we're here to do. Uh, I'm setting this up for you. How did last night go? Uh, 0-1 last night. So not great last night, but I got back over double digits on the season. So I'm just over 11 units right now on the season, um, which is not where I want to be, actually, to be honest. I'm a little frustrated with where I'm at, um, but it's going to grow. I got back into double, du double digits last week uh, and looking to push forward this week. Well, let's do exactly that and push forward 
Dabby Cab has two spots on the board here. First one's at 7 p.m. Eastern. The Miami Hurricanes, 12 and 6, 3 and 4 in the ACC. At the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, 7 and 11, 2 and 5 in the ACC. We're in South Bend for this one. Miami struggling right now. Losers of four of their last five. Coming off the 72 69 loss at Syracuse, which was on the heels of the 84 75 loss at home to FSU, which was a surprise loss there so not playing good basketball coming in against Notre Dame with the exact same ske- uh, record over the last five games one and four just an overtime win at Georgia Tech to show for it they also lost at home to Florida State they're coming off a loss at Boston College here 63 59 but that was what uh, last god that was was that last it was last God, when was the 15th? Jesus Christ, nine days ago. What the hell's wrong with my, what's wrong with my math? That was last Monday. So they have not played in nine days. Notre Dame not played in nine days. I wonder how uh, that affects the situation. Let's take a look at the line history here for the first game on the board for uh, Dabby Cab. He has tweeted out uh, his action for both of these spots. You need to follow him on X. We have Miami sitting right now as four and a half point favorites, minus four and a half and minus 112. They opened up at minus four. They're now minus four and a half. So a half point move towards the U. We have the total at 140 juice to the over. This opened up at 138 and a half. So we're kind of climbing and climbing up. And then when we get to the cash flow here for the first Big game. We do have LSU Georgia at 6:30, but for a big, big game on the board here, we have come on, show me. There we go. 26% of the tickets, but 65% of the cash on Notre Dame. So 74% of tickets, but just 35% of cash on Miami. It has moved to half point in their favor. From a total side, uh, we have 31% of tickets and 92% of cash on the over. 35 and 92 on the over. And it's climbed two points or a point and a half, depending on where you shop uh, following that sharp action. Take it away for us here, Cab. ACC action, Hurricanes fighting Irish. So all the money's on Notre Dame, and it moved a little bit towards Miami, huh? That's not all the money, but a lot of it, right? You know, mm-hmm. Miami came into the season ranked 13th, and that was after making that Final Four trip last season. Um, they had three tro- top contributors that returned to the team. Um, they added Cleveland, you know, the high-profile transfer from Florida State but just flat out haven't played up to expectations. Uh, They've fallen out of the top 25. They recently, you talked about the losses. Uh, They had a loss to Louisville in there where they were 16 and a half point favorites and they fell to Louisville. Um, And right now they're on a two game streak. You know, they, they lost to Florida state. They lost to Syracuse. Um, That last game against Syracuse was a very good game. Miami still covered the three and a half. They were three and a half point dogs. They lost by three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, because they still have a very strong offense. They have four players over, averaging over 14 points per game. Um, Omir, their leading scorer, the 6-7 forward, averaging 17.2 points per game. He is actually questionable in this spot. Um, you know, he's a physical post player that I'd like to have here. But, you know, we look across this Miami team. Scoring is not the issue. The, the, the issue with this team has been on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and that's where this comes in for Notre Dame here. I just think this is as far as styles go, as far as basketball styles go. And my favorite thing to bet is when I have the feeling that I have on this game, I do not think that Notre Dame matches up with Miami at at all. I think this is a nightmare style matchup matchup for Notre Dame um, because Notre Dame relies on their defense to get stops and carry them to victory flat out. Um, But like I said, as bad as Miami's been, as much as a letdown that they've had, they're still one of the top offenses in the country or in the conference, at least um, they're 36 in the nation in offensive efficiency. Um, you know, and like I said, I know Notre Dame on defense, Notre Dame's 43rd and de- on defense. Um, and they're going to try and limit Miami scoring. They're going to try and slow the pace of this game down, but I don't think it's going to work. Um, even without Amir in the game, I think Miami's going to be able to push the pace. Um and I just I don't think Notre Dame has the athletes to keep up with Cle- Cleveland, Pilar, um, you know, Pack on the outside. I think Miami's going to use their size on the perimeter to find easy looks, uh, both at the basket and from deep. Uh, you know, if you look at the Irish, they have not in in four of their last five games they haven't got to sixty points. And I'm telling you right fucking now that will not work against Miami. If you put up 58, 60 points against Miami, you're losing by 10, 12, 13 points. Um, Cause like you look at Miami, they put up over 70 points in their last nine games. And I just don't think that's a pace that Notre Dame can keep up with. Uh, Notre Dame's offense is terrible. I mean, 
they're they're in the three hundreds. Um, just not a good offense. So I think this is a smash and grab spot for Miami. Miami's on the outside looking in right now. You know, they want to get back to the tournament. Their season's not over yet. They've had a shit season. It's been a huge letdown, but it's not over. And this is a smash spot where I think they come out running and take Notre Dame down. I, I like Miami here a lot. Miami first half minus one and a half at minus one ten. Miami minus four at minus one oh eight. Both tweeted out by our Dabby Cab last night. Bullish on the Hurricanes at Notre Dame. Let's move on to the final spot on the board for Dabby Cab, and it correlates with our Justin McKelvey stack play of the day. He's on Northwestern plus three and a half. That is the stacks play today from Justin McKelvey. Also, we were given BJ's best bet in NBA. I've copied and pasted it. It is the Dallas Mavericks money line. We will discuss it here when we get into NBA with Dutch Boy Fresh. That is Dabby's co-host on tonight's big live betting show all about the hoops, college basketball, and NBA live betting show. We have the number 10 ranked Illinois fighting Illini 14 and 4, 5 and 2 in the Big Ten at the Northwestern Wildcats 13 and 5, 4 and 3 in the Big Ten. We're at Welsh Ryan Arena in Edmonton, Illinois. And Terrence Shannon uh, returned his first game back after the judge's ruling allowed him to rejoin the number 14, uh, then number 14 ranked Illinois fighting Illini. He went for 16 points. They won 86 63 over Rutgers on Sunday. And they looked complete. And they talked about feeling complete. Uh, second straight win, but they're a different team, clearly, with, with Shannon in it. And Northwestern's lost two of three. They played on Saturday. They lost at Nebraska. They've been winning at home and losing on the road. Now, we also watched them lose to Cleveland State at home, so let's not get too caught up in it. But uh, they played uh, – it was such a strange game against Nebraska. Nebraska shot 55.8% from three, 53 – excuse me, 53.8 from three, 55.3 from the field. But they turned the ball over 18 times. So Northwestern really did very little right except play clean basketball. They got terribly out-rebounded, 40-26. They got outshot, but they play, played clean basketball and still didn't cover the three-and-a-half points. I mean, I still didn't cover. I mean, of course they didn't cover. If they're only going to be successful with not turning the ball over, losing every other in every other facet. All right, let's talk about D-line history here for this one. This one pops off at 9 p.m. Eastern. We have... Illinois right now as three-point favorites. Uh, they opened up as four-point favorites. This got up to four-and-a-half, and it dropped as low as two-and-a-half this morning at Ben Online. So still at this point, we have a one-point move towards Northwestern. From a total side of things here, we are dealing with a uh, – sorry, we're dealing with a 140 – six and a half, 146 and a half. Uh, this opened up at 147, so we have a half point move to the under. We get into the cash flow for this spot. We have Mikey Money, start of the pimp slap play of the day in the wings coming up next. 30% of the tickets and 91% of the cash on the under. And from a spread perspective, 67% of the tickets and 77% of the cash on Northwestern. The line has moved in their direction. Take it away, Dabby Cab, Illinois, Northwestern. Man, this is one of those spots, Jimmy, where it's like, I guess the the sharp money is on Northwestern, the the smart capper, I guess whatever, however you want to call it, they're all, they're on Northwestern here. But I don't, I don't get it. You know, um, I I do think that this will be a closer game than the first matchup. But the first time these teams met just over a month ago, it was a thirty point loss for Northwestern. They were absolutely demolished, um, and they were demolished. You talked about it, Northwestern. What they try and do is play clean basketball and slow the pace of the game down. That's what they do. But against a team like Illinois, who is one of the best rebounding teams in the country, it's extremely hard to slow the pace down because the pace is dictated off of that defensive board, right? And Illinois is going to get up and down the court and up and down the court. And just like I was talking about for Notre Dame, I just think matchup-wise, this is a nightmare for Northwestern. I don't think they lost by 30 points last game uh, against Illinois because they played like shit. I think they lost by 30 points because that's how outmatched they are against this Illinois team. Um, and the fact that I was able to get a bucket and a half in the first half with Illinois, I just couldn't look away. You know, and maybe I'm taking huge bait here, but you look at this Wildcats team, they're 78th in field goal percentage, uh, 63rd in three point shooting. Um, they're 138 uh, in three and threes made. Um, so they're, they're just a, a little above average on everything, but it's on the defensive end of the court. Um, they're 66 in scoring defense, uh, defense. Um, 
but they're only 222nd in field goal defense and 298th in three-point defense, which is going to be a huge hole here against Illinois. Um, this is a rivalry game, you know, um, and I think, like I said, Illinois has a major, major edge on the glass in this game, which is going to help them set the pace. I can't say it enough how important against a team like Northwestern or, you know, Notre Dame or one of these teams that's going to really slow it down. Dictating the pace means everything. Um because Northwestern, they're going to want to play this at a snail's pace. Uh, but Illinois is going to speed it up. They're going to attack the glass. They're going to get out and running. Um, Illinois is 23rd in the nation in scoring offense. They shoot the ball very well. They're ranked 58 in field goal percentage. Um, and they're equally as tough on the defensive end. A lot of these teams, you see a drop-off. Illinois is outstanding on defense. They're 11th in field goal defense. Um, and that's it. The only thing that I'd give Northwestern the edge on is ball, ball, ball security. They protect the ball well. And you said that. They play clean basketball. I don't think that's going to be enough here. You know, Illinois won by 30 the first game. Uh, Wildcats, they did only shoot 30% from the field in that game. But like I said, this Illinois defense is electric. Um, I think Illinois limits their turnovers here. I think they they dominate on the glass. Um, and I think they win this game, and I think they cover the spread and change the narrative about ranked teams on the road. So I like Illinois here, first half. First half minus one and a half and minus 110. Why did you focus on the first half instead of the full game? I know that you primarily like to bet that, but there's got to be, you know, a plan behind it. What was it here? There's so there's always there's always things on the road. A lot of times you'll see me in the first half. And here with Illinois, you're giving me under like I need one bucket. I need one bucket. If I'm up by two points, I win. And I just I think Illinois is. Um, just that much better than Northwestern. You're giving me a bucket. I can't, I can't turn it down. Um, and I'd rather go in the first half than full game. If I'm going on the road, especially in an environment like this, this is a rivalry game. This place is going to be electric. You know, anything can happen. Uh, but you're talking about, you know, 20 minutes of basketball here and I need Illinois to be up by two points. I'll take it. I feel you. I feel you go get that cash. Dabby cab, Illinois first half minus one and a half and minus one ten. And then he is the Miami Hurricanes double up first half minus one and a half full game minus four. Dabby cab, tell us a little bit about what's going to happen tonight on All About the Hoops. Oh man, we've been cashing left and right all about the hoops tonight on Pub Sports Radio. You know, just get on your YouTube, tune in. Uh, I know you see me and my guy Dutch there, but we also have Billy. We have LJ with us, our guy Pimp Slap Play of the Day, Mike, Mike M that's about to come in, jumps on with us. And we have been cashing left and right, whether it's NBA, college basketball. We've been hitting our live bets, pregame bets. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, and I want to see you guys in there in the chat. So show up. I love it. Respect and follow Dabby Cab at Dabby Cab. He tweets out all of his action. Dabby Cab, go get that cash. And thank you for all of your great work here on the show. You can catch Dabby Cab right here on Wednesdays and Thursdays, delivering college basketball glory to us. Let's bring on your next guest. He is the star of Last Call here on our show uh, from Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but first, actually, why don't we bring him on and we can look at the horse race together. But let's bring him on from the dirtiest of Chester's, Rochester, New York City. Please welcome. I should say New York State, really. Rochester, New York State. Please welcome our guy and yours, Mr. Mikey Money. How are you, Mikey? What up, Jimmy? Let's go, baby. Let's go. We got two and a half hour horse race in here. Jose says we like to keep those athletes going, but that's borderline abuse. Let's see what they got. Yes, yes. I'm going to have to tell uh, I won't be able to pick up Ella because of uh, the horse race is still on. So I, well, uh, I, I'm uh, I'm going to adjust the time where I actually had the horse race freeze on me, but they're still running right now. We had some uh, we had some adjustments, some jockeys changed uh, colors mid race, but that's OK, because guess what? God damn it. They are still running and God damn it. They look great. And Mike, it's not abuse. They love it, Mike. They love the action. They, they love, love the it. sweat, and so do we. They love rocking for two and a half hours at top speed with someone whipping their ass. It sounds good. <laughs> Jimmy, shout out to this chat here. Billy Friedrich, EQ. Billy Marinacci there. AOD, Perky Bumps is in the house, man. Dave Burke, North Ender, Truth Teller. The gang showed up, man. They showed up. It's time to make some money. Well, let's get after it. I think we're okay with the time uh, we have up there. You don't need to touch it. We'll 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 figure out the perfect amount of time. But one hour, 41 minutes, it's all good. It is all good at this point here, Jose. Let's get to work here, Mikey Money. You start at 7 p.m. Eastern. The James Madison Duke, 17 and 2, 5 and 2 in the Sun Belt at the Old Dominion Monarchs, 5 and 14, just 1 and 6 in the Sun Belt. We're in Norfolk. 
Virginia for this one. Let's take a look at the situation we have here. James Madison winners of two straight in three of their last four. Uh, all of those coming at home. They've struggled a bit on the road. Uh, well, I shouldn't. I mean, they've only lost two games all year, uh, but they lost their last road game uh, to Southern Miss. Uh, so winning three of their last four, winning by 15 at home versus Marshall last out and beating UL Monroe, a bad basketball team by 19 previously. Uh, that was on Thursday night and Saturday night, respectively. And Old Dominion couldn't beat UL Monroe. That's how bad Old Dominion is. And that happened at home, which is wild. They beat Marshall, destroyed them by 25 points, and then lose outright to UL Monroe on Saturday. What a horrific display here. Uh, they were 11.5-point favorites against UL Monroe. Uh, they were down 35-24 in the first half. I mean, just a, a horrific performance from the Monarchs. Let's take a look at the line history here for this spot on the board. It is the first spot on the board for our Mikey Money. We have... James Madison, seven and a half point favorites uh, at home. They opened up at eight, got up to eight and a half, seven and a half. They've been bouncing all over the place, but they're sitting right now at seven and a half. So we have a half point move towards this angry, uh, disappointing Old Dominion group who showed they can play good basketball. You know, they're capable of playing a good basketball. From a total perspective, we are dealing with a 155. This opened up at 152. We've gone up three points. We get into the cash flow here for this. Bought. We have come on. Here we go. We have a twenty six percent of the tickets and fifteen percent of the cash on Old Dominion, and the lines moved a half point in their favor. From a total here, we have no help and no information. Take it away for us here, Mikey Money Dukes Monarchs. All over James Madison in this spot. I talked about these guys last week, and I said this team just bludgeons you and demoralizes you to the point that you just lose interest in playing basketball. And, you know, you look kind of at the chemistry and the makeup of this team when it comes down to it. You know, you got their junior guy out there. Terrence Edwards leads the team. He's going out there 17.2 points a game. He's a rebounding machine as well. So he's taking shots. He's getting rebounds. He's playing back way. He's playing two-way game of basketball out there. What do they do as well? They go out because they know they're stepping up in competition. They bring in a Boston College transfer, TJ Bickerson, uh, Bickerstaff. Now 10 rebounds as well. Uh, in five or of the last seven games for this guy. So this team's just getting stronger, and they're starting to gel, which is a really dangerous spot for anybody else left on the schedule. You know, back at the end of the, the lineup here, they got their senior guard and Noah Friedel. Uh, 26 points for this guy out of that South Alabama game, and he's averaging 11.5 points a game. So at any given time, the talent on this team is just able to step up and put you out, put your lights right out of this spot here. You got a James Madison team. 12 and six against the spread on the season. You know, we talk about an offense here with a team like James Madison that clearly can go and just stomp all over everybody whenever they, you know, 89 points against UL Monroe. Obviously, they had a tough spot there against Appalachian State. They throw up another 89 spot on, you know, South Alabama as well. And they overachieved the number. And I think that's the difference in this game here. You know, when you've got a team in, you know, Old Dominion, their big point guy offense or big, uh, big scoring guy offensively is the guard. Uh, Vassie and Alette, and uh, I don't think from a perspective, he's had a career high game there against Marshall with 27 points, but you know, that's a freshman, and you got a big team coming in here that's going to pound on that glass. They're going to go out there and put up points. And I mentioned that you know, um, the Dukes can go out there and score at will, they're scoring 85.9 points a game, and uh, it's 80 and a half more points than what the Monarchs are allowing on the season. Monarchs are allowing 77.4 points per game out there, and uh, I think that's trouble city for this team here, where you're going to have a team that puts you away deep. And, you know, they're defensively, they're not they're not ranked that great defensively, but they don't need to be because they're just so prolific on offense here. And, you know, when it comes down to it, I think you run out of gas, you run out of excitement. You're tired of chasing those boys back on the other side of things after you miss a, miss a shot. Old Dominion's three and seven against the spread and three and eight overall when it scores more than 69 points. That, to me, is the deciding factor. We've got a team in James Madison that can score more than their average that the Monarchs allow, and we have a team that doesn't cover the spread if they go out there and score more than the average that they allow on the season. That's a bad recipe for a team that's won. You know, Old Dominion, 26 of its last 27 night games uh, have produced a total of 153 or fewer points out there, so they're in a spot where, um, you know, they, they keep the score down because that offense, the other team's offense just can't keep up and compete with you. I don't know who the hell is looking at taking this Old Dominion team that this number is moving down. This 
I don't, I'm not a firm believer in that bookie head fake because it's, a, you know, it's, I'm not a big guy. You know, we, we talk about this all the time, Jimmy. Where's the cash coming and how is the book reacting to it? This might be that classic example of the head fake where they're just trying to sucker people into trying to take on Old Dominion. What do you want to do taking on a team that's 5-14 and 14 and sucks against the spread, not good at home, just got bludgeoned by a UL Monroe team, and now you got James Madison? It's the other way around. When you play a James Madison team, you're supposed to get beat down the next time around because they drain you out. They wear your legs out, and uh, they just come off that big loss against Monroe. I don't care if they're home or not. James Madison's going to literally put – Boots to ass and get this job done. Seven and a half, take it. Goes down to six and a half, I'll take it again. That's wild because uh, the, the market movement for this is exactly what, if if you were on Old Dominion, it's exactly what's been working for me so well. Is yeah. When the public is hammering one side, moves a half point away to the other side, and the team is coming off of an embarrassing loss. Uh, the thing all, is, it doesn't it even all... matter if there's if the line suggests there's an injury. It doesn't even matter because they have so many guys that can score in double digits and play defense that it's going to be hard for that old Dominion team to hang on. I just don't, I just don't see where it is in the cards. And and you know, this should be this line should probably be twelve or thirteen, kind of like what that Marshall line was. But I think the fact that you know James, James Madison, um, you know, I should say probably the better chance here is that UL Monroe lost so badly they're kind of skewing this line should just be the other direction as well it just doesn't make sense to me this line's a head scratcher i've been cashing with james madison i'm not going to get in the way this team capable of putting up 90 points at the snap of your fingers and uh i don't old dominion is not one of those teams that's capable of putting up 70 points at the snap of your fingers so this this could get ugly fast pinnacles moved it to seven so it Perfect. looks like Wow, that's wild. I can't. I, I mean, to... I don't. I don't understand seven. I mean, I guess it's because they're on the road. Maybe that's the factor that goes into it. But uh, I'm taking it. I'm running with these boys. We got to get back to neutral with this thing. And I think James Madison's a good spot to start the card off. Wild. I'm gonna have to spend more time with that <laughs> spot here, uh, clearly, because it it all correlates for me on the the ugly pig and the pig demanding lipstick. You put lipstick uh, on it. You know what happens. It's a beautiful pig. It's a gorgeous so pig. Big. Down to fuck. 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Next spot on the board. We have already discussed this spot. You have heard one side of the fence, and that side is CMAC on Alabama Crimson Tide. You are about to hear the other side of the fence. Mikey Money, take it away. Big clash in the SEC in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of being on the opposite side of the C-Mac as a general principle in life. So, um, you know, I respect what he's doing out there in the college game. I just think this is this is a spot where uh, where I, I got to be on the other side of this thing. And it's moved again. This one's moving. Now we're at plus four. Look, 93% of the cash is all over Alabama. They love Alabama at home. And, you know, what's not to love? Last year they beat Auburn two times in a row. So, uh, you know, we're still sitting at 12 and six with this Alabama side of things. And, um, you know, I think that the fact that, you look at what Auburn's been doing this year. I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to get too cute with this thing. They lost that first game off the hop there against Baylor. They've gone on a run since then. They're eight one and one. Their last time they didn't cover the spread goes all the way back to before Christmas out there. Again, put them in a revenge spot. I know Alabama won six in a row. They covered five, but then they got the shit kicked out of them against Tennessee. So the thing about this matchup for me, I heard C Mac talking about the three pointers again. Not not happy to hear that he's on the other side of this thing, but. What does Auburn do well? They get rebounds. So you miss those three-pointers. Guess what happens? You're in a bad spot now because they just clean, clean up your scrap for you. Uh, I think Bama shoots too many threes in this case. There's another game we're going to talk about that's a similar situation. But Auburn's defensive efficiency is sixth in college basketball. So plenty of opportunity out there. And what Auburn does well, they don't need to take those uh, those kind of Hail Mary three-pointers out there. They shoot 43.7% from the floor. The thing that I like about Bama is the schedule advantage. It's a marginal advantage, though. They're 117 in national ranking and scheduled to 158. So I get that. But, and I know Alabama 4 and 1 in SEC play, but I think that Tennessee team kind of, kind of overexposed what they've got going on out there. And, you know, both teams score over 83 points a game. I know that's a big factor out there, but I think it's the Auburn defense that makes the difference in this thing. And, and I think we're going to see that shine through here. You know, you look back at it, both teams are playing at an elite level right now. There's absolutely no question about it. But, you know, when you look at this overall, here's the big number for you. When you got an away, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you're off an away loss, and uh, your opponent got the home win out there, and you're a, and it's a ranked game. 
Uh, you're looking at a three and 13 spot as well. And uh, here's the thing about these numbers. The average line we're seeing in those games where it's that team that's off the away loss, um, you know, playing at home is in a spot where their average line is almost 13 points. It's 12.9. Those teams are still losing in those games, 84 to 67. So I texted you earlier about this. It's the old double dipper spot for me. Auburn has won each of its last 12 night games as well. So they're not afraid to travel and play in the later schedule. I know it's on the road and I get that Alabama and the home court advantage, but midweek, I kind of mitigate a little bit of that because I think, you know, these guys have a lot of things going on, a lot of responsibilities on the deck, and they're usually looking for the big TV exposure on the weekend. So I'll, uh, I'll forego some of that and I'll jump on that. Now I see the fours. I see a plus four at minus 114 over at Bet Rivers. And uh, it's the uh, money line spot for me as well. I got a plus 143 at points bet. Wow, what a fascinating look. Uh, let me just see if I can beat. Th- so I've got plus 145. Perfect. That beats it, right? And then yep. I can't beat the four at minus 140. I can be- get the four at minus 140. It, it literally just moved to four right as I right as I came on the show. So I'd imagine it's going to probably start to follow suit. But, you know, this is kind of that perfect fit for this model here. Again, the the uh, coming off the away loss, opponent, home, win. Uh, they're ranked. You're not. Your opponent shoots more than 30 field goals in the game. Uh, you know, you're just not winning those spots out there. Your opponent's shooting well. They came off a home win. They're feeling good. You're coming back home. You're going to try to figure things out and you're going to get your ass slapped. It's probably a, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be a double digit blowout, but uh, I certainly like Auburn to come out there and get the job. And I'll take the four and I'm going to take a little bit of that money line. Let's go. You got it. Marcus McCarthy rolling with it uh, as well. By the way, Morgan, Senior, I've copied and pasted, but we're not talking about that spot. Uh, and he's on an NC State uh, plus 215 over Virginia. Uh, so he's got NC State plus 215 over Virginia, his favorite dog. Today. All right, tricky let's spot. let's roll on to the next spot on the board for our Mikey Money. 7 p.m. action, UNC Greensboro Spartans, Western Carolina Catamounts. Three straight wins for UNC Greensboro. One came on the road, the last two at home, and they were the last one was impressive. A dominating performance, 82-59 over Wofford. Uh, you know, uh, they just looked really good. They were just six and a half point favorites. They dominated, completely dominated the game in all facets of it. Uh, so that is UNC Greensboro on the three and winning streak. The opposite for Western Carolina. They've lost two straight uh, by a combined seven points. A uh, loss by four to Sanford. And then went to Furman and lost 65-62 on Saturday. Both teams played on Saturday. Uh, They were three-and-a-half point dogs and covered by a half point. So back-to-back losses for Western Carolina. Let's take a look at the line history. Again, this game popping off at 7 p.m. We have a Western Carolina right now as one-and-a-half point favorites. They opened up uh, as... Two point favorites got up to two and a half now, one and a half. So a half point move uh, towards UNC Greensboro. From a total standpoint, here we have, uh, sorry, let me grab this. Here we have it sitting at a 132 and a half. Uh, opened up at 135, dropped to 132 and a half. So a two and a half point uh, move here. And then from a cash flow uh, standpoint, God, sorry, so many games here. From a cash flow standpoint, we got this one. Come on, show your fucking ah, here we go. Fifty-five percent of the tickets, fifty-five percent of the cash on UNC Greensboro, and eighty percent of the tickets on the over, but no word of cash. All right. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, uh, truth teller, it doesn't show because he was swearing. He did say he was going to bounce, uh, and for us all to cash our bets and good luck. And, uh, but now he says, fuck, no, this is personal. Now I hope you bitches lose your money on the Ravens. So uh, it's a wild oh, roller coaster man, ride. It's a wild roller coaster. Continues to double down and triple down. <laughs> yeah, and down. I mean, it's like, it's uh, like so, you're at the roulette table and it keeps coming up red and you're betting on black. Uh, you know what? I got to, I got to put 10 times my money on it now. Just now it's there. personal and we're bitches. And that comes on the heels of us saying of him saying, um, uh, that comes on the heels of us saying, I it's hope great, everybody wins great, their action. Right? Not, he yeah, says, anyway, great. I'm done talking about football. I'm sorry to derail the chat. <laughs> now, now we're uh, all you know, for what it's worth, uh, truth teller, when uh, Kansas City specifically plays a team that led a defensive or special teams touchdown, and they are 12-0 and straight up that next game out there. So for what it's worth, 
for what it's worth. That's a nice angle for him. Uh, for us, for us, <laughs> us bitches are in huge, huge problems. It's huge problem. What a roller coaster ride. We're buddies a second ago. Now, now it's first one. We're bitches. Okay, uh, take it away though. Here for us, Greensboro, uh, UNC Greensboro at Western Carolina. Yeah, this line's doing what I expected it to do right now. And, you know, we're seeing the – you know, we you always talk about this, and, and I try to as well. When you look at these numbers that are kind of shrinking, where the, where we're compressing on that spread, getting it closer to a pick em, what's the cash flow doing on the money line? And if you look at that thing, the entire – plan. this is the scenario for what's going on with the money line right now. The public comes in. They see Western Carolina 15-4 and four as the better record. They're at home. And it's only two points. You know what I'm going to do? Screw it. I'm just going to take the money line. I'll pay up a little bit for it. And guess what happens almost every single time someone carries that attitude. They're trying not to win. They're just they're trying to keep a softer loss is what it comes down to. And they end up taking the loss anyway. So I think UNC Greensboro is a good spot in this game here. Again, I think the wrong team's favored. Yeah, we look at this number. It's tight. The head-to-head -head matchup for these two teams, you know, kind of tells the story. UNC Greensboro, four of the last games they play head-to-head -head have been winners. We've got West Carolina coming off of two losses in a row. And, you know, if you look back at them, you know, they lose to Furman. They did cover the spread. I got that. But they were at home against Sanford, so they're kind of in a weird schedule spot. They had two road games. They come back home. Then they got to go back on the road, and uh, and here they go again. Whereas on the other side of things, uh, you know, UNC Greenboro's been home. They've had time to get things right. They played a shit Citadel team. Uh, they didn't cover the spread, but they won. Then they play a Wofford team, and they put the boots to the, to the ass on Wofford. Uh, I think they're ready to go spin on the road and take care of a team that they've had no problem taking care of in the past. It's a big conference game out there, clearly. Uh, Western Carolina, four and two in the SoCon. You know, Greensboro, five and one. So this is going to be a big factor for as we start to get closer to that conference tournament. There's a lot for both of these teams to play for. And I just think it comes down to a spot where we've got, you know, the, the better team prevails here. UNC Greensboro has won 14 of its last 15 games against Western Carolina. They got no problem pimp slapping these teams right in the face when they go out there and play them. And, uh, you know, they got teams, they got guys that go out there and ball. You know, uh, Mikael Brown Jones goes out there with 20.1 points a game on average. That's not just a spike. Like one of those games we talked about earlier, guy puts up 27 points. He's averaging 15 on the season. These dudes are averaging 20 points a game out there. So they should have no problem getting the job done. They got a trio of double digit scorers. They got guys that go out there and rebound and they got, you know, uh, Kobe Langley, 9.4 points a game, but 6.2 assists and 2.5 steals. Uh, they're getting, they're, you know, they're a rounded team. They're a complete team that should be more than capable of going out here and handling business. They average 77.1 points a game. They shoot 47.1%. That's kind of been that um, astonishing mark when you start to get into college basketball because we see a lot of teams that that 47 to 50% sweet spot, anything beyond that's just an anomaly, but they shoot 39.1% from three. And they're an effective team at the foul line with a 70.4%, uh, you know, shooting percentage from the foul line there. On the other side of things, you know, we see that uh, at best, Western Carolina is getting themselves 76 points a game. I don't think it's going to be enough to win this game here. They do shoot 46.2% from the field, so slight advantage to, uh, to the Greensboro side of things. And then they dip down again when they get to the foul line. So, again, all the shooting parameters support a spot for, um, you know, UNC Greensboro to get the job done. And, uh, the fact that the line's moving in this direction, contrary to what we said about that last spot there, I think this is the right spot with Greensboro. I think they win this game outright. Uh, I was just kind of contemplating the way to get this thing done now because the fact that it's moving at plus one and a half, it looked like there was a two and a half, but that was Caesars, and I just checked it's not. So uh, I'm just going to change this one up and just go to the – just go to the. what can you get for money? What's the difference you have between the money line and the spread? If it's like a nickel, I'll take the spread, but if it's if it's – more than a nickel, I'll, I'm going to jump on the money line. Let's do it here. Money line action for you on this one. So we saw the, yeah, the best we can get you is plus 105. So we can get you a plus one and a half at minus 107. Or Yeah, that, uh, that's that, the plus one and a half at minus 107 makes, makes enough sense for me in that case. Uh, what would right. you say? It was plus 105 to minus 107? Uh yes, plus one hundred five. Right, uh, yeah, give me the one. Give me the one hundred five. All right, oh, plus one hundred five for UNC Greensboro and our Mikey money. Let's roll. Oh, uh, Truth Teller now says good luck to everyone. Okay, good. Okay, good. good. So it's uh, we we were we were all bitches a second ago, but now it's now it's all good. 
It's all good. It's all friendly. For the most good luck, everyone. Right. <laughs> good luck, everyone. All right. Next up, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, Villanova Wildcats, 11 and 7, 4 and 3 in the Big East at St. John's Red Storm, 12 and 7, 4 and 4 in the Big East. We're at Madison Square Garden, MSG. For this one, two good teams playing poorly, or maybe they're not good teams at all, and we found that out in conference play, but you kind of think that they're pretty good teams. I mean, that was a tough loss for Villanova against Connecticut, 66-65 on Saturday. That was their third loss in four games. St. John's has lost three straight. They both have the common opponent in Marquette. Uh, St. John's just lost at home to Marquette by a point. Villanova traveled to Marquette on the Monday of last week and lost uh, 87-74. So three or four losses for Villanova, three straight losses for St. John's. Let's get into the line history here for this one. Sorry, I got money line up. Let me just quickly uh, move over to point spread. And uh, let's talk. Oh, this isn't the last spot on the board. My bad. No, Sorry, my bad. Yeah, we got one more after this. Sorry. Uh, Villanova St. John's here. This one's popping off at 830. Let's set up the line history and hand it over. We are sitting here right now at minus three and a half for St. John's. They opened up at minus four, got to four. It's bounced all over the place. We have a half point move to Villanova. Let's get into the cash flow here for this one. And that is a, a 140. Oh, sorry. That was the wrong game. Here we go. That's a 145. Sitting at 145. It's opened up. A, oh, God. No, it's just moved. There's been a huge move in the last little bit. Uh, so this move to 144, 12, 17. And then 20 minutes ago, moved to 143 and a half. So we have a two point move to the under. Let's get into the cash flow then for this spot. Uh, we have 86% of the tickets, 75% of cash on the under. We've finally seen a move. And spread-wise, 83% of the tickets and 86% of the cash on St. John's. Public spot on St. John's. Let's see what Mikey's going to do here at Madison Square Garden, Villanova, St. John. Yeah, stand me with the old square patty on this one because I got to go with St. John's here. So I'll give you a couple of reasons why. You know, high level. Coaching advantage. Kyle Neptune versus Rick Pitino. I love everything about Rick Pitino, including the way that he recruits players to come to his program. Uh, and that's not even a legend from my understanding. So, you know, he goes out to Europe, he wins. He comes back, he plays for Iona or play, uh, coaches Iona. He gets Iona into the conference tournament in his year, first year off the hop there and uh, hasn't looked back from that thing. So uh, now he's playing, he's coaching for St. John's. And uh, I like it. I think it's a great opportunity from a coaching advantage. Kyle Neptune on the other side of things. Um, struggling. We don't know who Villanova is at this point. You know, they're a team that's gone out there. They, you know, kind of struggled to beat a big five school. They lost to Penn. They lost to Drexel. They lost to St. Joe's. Uh, kind of not sure who their identity is. They recruited a bunch of players. Uh, they tried to kind of figure things out. But I think what it comes down to is a mismatch. And second thing I look at here is, um, you know, schedule. We already saw that these boys kind of whooped them up real good one time already. Ten points, right? St. John's comes out there and gets the victory. Uh, St. John's then sits on top of the conference, but, uh, they hang on with another spot against Providence. I think, I think a bunch of us were on Providence in that game, but, uh, Providence wasn't able to get the job done. And St. John's came back through, I believe as a small dog to come out and win that game out right by one point. Then they go through that kind of murderer's row. They're at Creighton. They lose by one. They get busted up by Seton Hall in a blowout spot. Then they come back home and they play Marquette, all three teams, top of the conference within seven days of each other. So. Difficult situation out there. That's going to wear on you. And uh, and that, again, was the kind of gauntlet out there. So bad scheduling spot that I give the advantage to St. John's in that spot because that's just a tricky spot to be in. And then last but not least, who's shooting the ball on this team here? You got a team in Villanova that shoots way too many three-pointers. And the problem for that with Villanova here is they're an incredible free throw team. They're best in the country. They're very capable. They shoot third most three-pointers in the conference. They're top 10 in college basketball in three-point attempts overall. And now you're going to what essentially is a neutral site situation. I know it's home for St. John's, but the garden, that's tricky. Those national basketball sight lines are entirely different than a lot of those college barns out there. And uh, that's going to be a tough spot to go out there and shoot the three-pointer from. So uh, when you've got a team in Villanova that shoots less than 37% from the three, they're one in five uh, over there against the numbers. So we've got a one in five, less than 37%, a seven and one when they're greater than 37%. St. John's going to have to play some defense and force them to some bad, awkward shots. This is another game that has huge conference implications right now. They want to get themselves back into that top five spot. And right now, if you look at the national college basketball projections, you've got these teams ranked seventh and eighth in seeding for the tournament. But if they get in the top five, 
they get that conference by and it's an opportunity for them to kind of get a, a much higher seating against a weaker team when they get to the conference start with the NCAA tournament. So I think there's a lot to play for. There's a lot at stake. I like the better coach with the team that just had a tough schedule now back at home against the team that just doesn't shoot right. They got the wrong guys shooting three pointers because they are an effective team that gets free throws. They just can't get away to get the dunks in there. So keep moving that line for me. I got the three and a half. I'm good with it. And uh, again, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of turn the plane into the storm on this one and try to fade that line movement as well. Minus three and a half at minus one ten. Let's move on to ten thirty p.m. I think I got, I think I got a minus one hundred five just for ROI purposes. Oh, great, let's do that. Vandal's got a minus one hundred five. Uh, let's move on to ten thirty p.m. Eastern. Uh, True Teller, jumping on the other side now. After all of this, it, you're now. It's not helping the chat at all. It's it's okay for you to be adamant on one side, but now you're are you just like trying to mess with us um please uh just this is just nuts now let's not just be crazy you you, you have all your action on the chiefs god bless you it's part of the fun we don't have to be on each every side but don't do this now please if you don't mind please all right let's move on to the final spot on the board here 10 30 p.m eastern number 24 ranked colorado state rams 15 and 3 3 and 2 on mount west because we do have one thing uh two dollar in of the rules that peter lochak taught us one is lying and it's a crucial one of the rules in the chat here and uh so i guess that's that's what you're doing now as a joke or whatever but just please uh stop it's all good it's all fun and games Good luck with the Chiefs, but don't don't mess with us like this, okay? Uh, number twenty four ranked Colorado State Rams fifteen and three, three and two in the Mountain West at the Nevada Wolfpack fifteen and four, two and three in the Mountain West. We're at Lawler Event Center. Oh God, okay. Um, all right, we're gonna shut this down here. Fuck, man. Um, oh. I'm I'm confused. This is getting confusing. Are we on yeah, the Ravens or are we on the Chiefs? Right. Are the okay. Bills playing this weekend? You're going to hide. Uh, uh, we can talk about unhiding you at some other point. Okay, uh, let's go. Here, uh, we have Colorado State Rams at the Nevada Wolfpack. Colorado State's won two straight games, both at home, Air Force and UNLV. That came on the heels of two straight road losses. They lost at Utah State and lost at Boise. Nevada, on the other side, has lost three straight. I mean, this team was had won 15 of 16 games. They lose at home to Boise State. They lose at San Diego State. We were all on San Diego State. Uh, that was last Wednesday. It was a great win for us. And then they lose at Wyoming 98-93. So two straight wins for Colorado State at home, two straight losses for them on the road, and then three straight losses overall for Nevada. One came at home and two came on the road. Let's get into the uh, line history here for this one. From a line history standpoint, we are sitting here with Nevada as three-point favorites. They opened up as three-and-a-half-point favorites. Started at two, excuse me. Wow. Uh, it went down to one and a half before the Nevada money started rolling in. Uh, so they're back at three and a half. Uh, excuse me. They're back at three and a half at, at Bet Online. A one and a half point move towards Nevada there. From a total side of things here, we are sitting uh, at 144. 144, and this is uh, opened up at 146. Actually, it's down to 143. Uh, this just moved 15 minutes ago down to 143. So we have a three point move to the under and a point and a half move towards the Wolfpack. From a cash flow standpoint, here we have 93% of the tickets and 99% of the cash on Nevada. Jesus, that's uh, all on Nevada and no information on the total. Take it away for us here. Our guy, yeah, I don't like, money, last game. I don't, like, I don't like flying in the blind when it comes to the total, but I feel this is a total spot that you know you absolutely have to clip on here. Uh, first of all, you got that you mentioned that Nevada team off of three losses in a row. Uh, and I track a bunch of different spots, and, and one of them is kind of this I'll call it the posse of. And after you play a posse of teams that include Wyoming, your next games go over at a significant rate. Uh, in fact, it's 13 and 23 to the under. And uh, if you look at this game, it makes a lot of sense when you break it down. They were on the road. They had a little elevation factor to deal with. And it's a 98-93 game that they get just, just exposed and beaten down and, and humiliated there as a seven-point favorite. So, you know, what do you do? You got to come back home. You got to 
you know, they got three days rest on him going into this game. And you got to figure out defense first. You can't let that shit happen again because you're going to let the schedule get away from you. And it's going to be a difficult spot, especially when you have a team that comes in and shoots the two and the three as well as Colorado State does. Colorado State's got incredible efficiency. I just talked about that window between 47 and 50 percent. You know, this team's shooting 51.4 percent from the floor. They're 37.6 percent from three. The difference maker for me in this game here is you got to force those boys to shoot from the three if you're if you're Nevada. And, uh, you know, that's a potential challenging spot. They're not very good uh, when it comes to stopping the three. So they got to definitely kind of try to get their hands and faces and and, 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 and step into their uh, their deficiency, if you will, where they're just not as good. The other side of things, though, when you look at Colorado State, they're a strong rebounding team. So as of the rebounding efficiency with this team, as Nevada shoots, they're going to end up not having a lot of second chance opportunities out there. They're going to get gobbled up and vultured. So uh, that's definitely going to limit that secondary scoring that goes into the play. You know, we look back at this thing and each of Nevada's last seven games when they play conference opponents at home have produced a total of 143 points or less. So we know that if you look back at it, they held San Diego State to 59. They held Boise State to 56. They held Air Force to 54. They went on the road and held uh, Fresno to 57. They got no problem keeping this game down in the 60s. And I think it's a tricky little spot on the other side with Colorado State. You know, Colorado State, everybody was, you know, getting off on them. The fact that they went out there and they shut down Creighton. Uh, granted, that was at home. And uh, they ended up getting to the top 19. But they're not the same team. Their last two wins against UNLV and Air Force, certainly not worth uh, worth the badge of honor that goes along with it. They only scored 58 against Boise State. So, you know, difficult situation. They're not the greatest of travel teams out there. And uh, I think this is an opportunity. We're seeing these numbers go low. I mentioned the situation with that posse of teams that get played out there. And I think the challenge for Nevada to score in this game and the long haul is certainly going to be there. I think Colorado State has the opportunity to pull away for this game. Um, you know, but when I look at what happens with the way that Nevada plays the game, they're one of the most efficient teams in the first half out there. So I expect their defense to be able to hold them boys off in Colorado State with scoring a bunch of points in the first half of things. And it's going to be the second half that I'm exposed to. And I think that as this number continues to drop, makes me less excited about the opportunity. But, um, you know, big factor out there when you've got a home favorite off of three straight losses and a total that's less than 145, they're 147 to 154 going to the under in those spots. Not the biggest of margins, but the total and the numbers, the margin that I wanted to focus on, the average total we're seeing in those games is 136 points. So even if it's down to 143 and a half right now, we still have seven and a half points in our back pocket from the original two. The number's dropping. They're not showing us where the number looks or what the percentage looks like. I think it's some trickery because they don't want us to see that this number makes a lot of, everybody's probably pounding this over. There should be a ton of scoring. These two teams score, but these numbers show that it's not going to be a score fest. It's going to be an under opportunity for us. 143s, you know, just for future, if anybody's listening to this down the road before tip off as it's a, what, nine o'clock game, I'd still like it all the way down to probably 140, 140 and a half, even 140. Uh, but anything lower than that, I think, is is is, is probably going to have to be a pass. So you want to get on it early. It's 4-1 and one to the under in its last five spots out there, and that home favorite's off a three-loss situation as well. So lots of things align here to go out there and watch this team play some defense and uh, you know keep in mind that early start that I mentioned. I love it, Mikey. Under 143 and a half is the best line out there right now. Pinnacle's moved it to 143. Can you beat that anywhere, Mikey? One forty three and a half minus one ten. No, I don't think so. One, I, we also I have St. John's that. minus three and a half, and UNC Greensboro yeah. money line plus one hundred five. Auburn plus four and the plus one forty five, and James Madison minus seven at minus one hundred five for Mikey money. Mikey, tell us a little bit about what's happening on last call tonight. Oh man, we're doing a lot of great things out there. We're having ourselves a week, boys and girls. Uh, nice little uh, seven and three day yesterday that generated almost six units on that thing. So uh, we're going to run it back again today. We do it every Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Elton's up tonight. You guys know what LJ does. He does not mess around. Prop sides totals. He's ready to get there and cash on the NBA. I, I threw the gauntlet down to him. I said, look, you know, I had to show them boys on the sesh how to cap the NBA on Monday. I told him I went and swept the board in the NBA on Tuesday. Big shoes to fill. And he said he's got himself a... Uh, a uh, ready to go card tonight as well. So I wanted to throw that out there for Dutch because he knows he knows exactly what I'm talking about from the session on Monday. <laughs> 
Uh, well, I'm sure it will come up in our conversation. I'm sure it will come up, Mikey. Thank you for rocking with us. Please follow Mikey on X at Pimp Slap Play of the Day and catch him this evening and Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern, right here on Pub Sports Radio on our big new show, Last Call. Thank you, Mikey. Any last words for the Capri Sport in the show? No, man. Thanks, Jimmy, for the opportunity. Shout out, Jose, and the six-hour horse race, and everybody that's up there in the chat, Al, Perky, Troy, the group, even Troop Teller out there. I don't know if he was calling me a bitch, but I don't take it personal. So, uh, you know, I hope you guys all get that cash tonight, and I'll see you guys back here later, 6 p.m., Pub Sports Radio. Last call. Let's go, baby. Get that cash.